I'm Lisa Parati brown Editor-in-Chief of Robert Parker Wine Advocate and reviewer for Bordeaux, Napa, and the Cabernet Sauvignon parts of Sonoma. And I'm with... Erin Brooks. I review the wines of Oregon, California Central Coast, as well as some Sonoma wines, mainly the Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and Rhone varieties. Today we're talking about the elements of great Cabernet Sauvignon, and specifically we're looking at site. What does it take to make a great Cabernet Sauvignon vineyard? Um, and we're starting out tasting a few different wines that we've actually reviewed. Um, in our glass at the moment, we have the Chateau Boyd Cantonac from Margot. Uh, this is a 2009 vintage, so a pretty good vintage um, as well. And then we'll be moving on to talk about the Lark Mead from Napa Valley in Calistoga. Uh, there's straight Cabernet Sauvignon. And then we've got Dow's Cabernet Sauvignon from Paso Robles um, that Aaron's specifically going to talk about. And we'll talk about a few other wines that we don't have in front of us. Um, site. Well, let's focus first of all on climate. Cabernet Sauvignon is a pretty fussy grape, maybe not as fussy as Pinot Noir, but it's still pretty fussy. And, and you know, in, in my view, there are very few really, really great Cabernet Sauvignon regions and sites for that reason in the world. Um, of course, you can't talk about great Cabernet Sauvignon without kind of talking about the homeland, Bordeaux. Um, and today I specifically honed in on Margot. Um, for this because Margot maybe has that sweet spot in being in the Medoc of, of the, the um, climate that we're looking for and then later we'll get to soil as well. Um, so what we're really looking for is a moderately warm climate. Not too hot and certainly not too cold because at either end of those extremes you can get into trouble mm -hmm. when it comes to ripening Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, if we look at just Australia, I used to review the wines of Australia, for example, um, they produce Cabernet Sauvignon at all extremes there. Um, you see Cabernet Sauvignon grown in Tasmania, for example, and, and they can make pretty good Cabernet Sauvignon there, but it's right on the edge of what you'd want in terms of, of climate there. It's so warm. cool there. Very cool. Um, they're, they're producing sparkling wines and a lot of Pinots there. <laughs> Um, at the other end of the spectrum in Australia, in, in a warmer climate like Barossa, they're also producing Cabernet Sauvignon. But I'd like to think that the sweet spot um, for, for consistent, consistently ripening great Cabernet is somewhere in the middle, somewhere like Margaret River um, or Kunawara, where they tend to have that consistently moderately warm climate that ripens Cabernet. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what happens at, at either extreme. Um, at the cooler end of the spectrum, Aaron. <laughs> at the cooler end of the spectrum in Bordeaux, I guess we're talking about, or, or Tasmania. At the cooler end of the spectrum, maybe the grapes don't get quite ripe enough, which means that we're going to have all kinds of green flavors in the wine, the greeny meanies, as, yeah. as we say. Methoxy pyrazines or pyrazines, as we call them in the business. Exactly. It sounds very fancy, but what that means is the bell pepper and the jalapeno flavors. And along with that, if you haven't had, uh, if you don't have super ripe, you know, really perfectly ripe grapes, your tannins are going to be super fuzzy, super gritty, like really hard, and again, that lean kind of a feeling. Yeah, you need a certain amount of hang time and warmth in order to ripen out both of those those factors, the pyrazines mm -hmm. and the tannins. Otherwise, you get what I call a lean, mean, green wine. <laughs> yeah. um, at the other end of the spectrum, at the, the hot end of the spectrum, in some areas of the Barossa, as I used for an example, or maybe precisely why they don't grow Cabernet Sauvignon in Southern Rhone, um, you'd get a Cabernet that's, that's probably downright jammy, as we'd call it, you know, kind of overblown, yeah. not really um, bringing out all of the incredible nuances that you can have in a really great Cabernet Sauvignon. Sort of washes away the characteristics of the grape and it becomes a sort of generic, jammy, high alcohol, chocolatey bomb. The other big problem you have when you've got too much heat um, in a warm climate is that the sugars can rush to ripeness and then over ripeness, mm -hmm. meaning you get a very alcoholic Cabernet Sauvignon. 
Um, and then the tannins fall short. So they actually don't ripen, which seems a little bit counterintuitive, but you still get those underripe hard tannins. And, and the same with the pyrazines. If, if the vine had gone through a period of shutdown, you can still get quite a herbal streak in the, in, um, or character mm -hmm. in the wines, um, mm -hmm. even from a hot climate. So at those extremes, Cabernet Sauvignon can be, at worst, deeply unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> it can be horrible. Yes. Um, but despite those extremes, I think, um, you know, the Dow wine that we've got here, Paso Robles is quite warm. It's quite dry. Um, but we're still able to make great wine. And Bordeaux, the same, right? It's quite rainy. It's quite cool. But we're still able to, to make great wine. In most vintages. In most yeah. vintages. And that's what you're looking for. I mean, most of the, the great vineyards of the world, the great regions of the world, are what I'd term as marginal. Um, for a grape variety, meaning you can just about ripen them, but it's a push. Um, and you're always going to get the odd vintage where it, it doesn't quite work. Um, you get, a, you know, a cooler vintage, you know, I'm thinking about uh, 2013, mm -hmm. for example, in Bordeaux recently. Um, we had 2011 in Napa where it was rainy and cool. Um, all, I think, Cabernet growing regions at some point run you know into a difficult vintage um, but we'll talk that about that another time let's move on to soil but, types yeah in terms of site um, we're talking about extremes so why can we make great Cabernet in Paso and also in Bordeaux so soil has a lot to do with that right absolutely um, it, the classic soil in the Medoc um, is free draining um, it's it's Margot in particular has a lot more of the gravelly soil profile that the Medoc is known for than perhaps even the other Medoc communes, um, such as Poyag, Saint-Julien, saint, saint um, So there's a lot of gravel there, and that really suits Cabernet Sauvignon. It likes to have its roots nice and dry. It likes those free-draining soils, unlike Merlot, which is planted on the right bank and has more of the clay soils. Um, it's kind of the opposite, though, isn't it, when it's, you come to Paso Robles? It's fascinating. So in Paso, here we have, um, for the Dow wine, for example, is a calcareous clay. So in Bordeaux, we think of clay as being friendly for Merlot. Merlot likes wet feet. Clay. Well, now we're in Paso, and it's quite warm. It's quite dry. We have droughts. Um, so now, all of a sudden, we've planted on clay, and this is a perfect scenario because it provides a little coolness. It provides a little extra water where we need it. I, we've got also the lark mead here as well. Lark mead's kind of, you know, um, <laughs> right in between. Right in between those yeah, two. Yeah, because actually it's a kind of uh, particular vineyard in Calistoga that's right between two rivers. Um, so yes. it does, it is have quite um, a riverbed it's flat, soil. With it's in the between. Stones. Yeah. But it does have the alluvial fans coming mm -hmm. down from both because it's right in between the Mayakamas and the Vaca Mountains as well. So it's kind of the best of both worlds yeah. there <laughs> um, at, at Larkmead and Calistoga. Exactly. Um, but, you know, the, the important thing is that trying to meet the specific needs of Cabernet Sauvignon with sight. Um, is is absolutely key to making great so, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, and there's there's no you know straightforward you know it has to be this climate, it has to right. be this soil. Um, you can mitigate you know sometimes a warmer climate with a cooler soil, yeah, and pass, vice versa. Paso, we've got to use elevation now. You know, maybe we've got to use some some really targeted irrigation. Elevation becomes a huge factor in Santa Barbara. The wind becomes a factor from the from the ocean. So there are several ways to mitigate if you're you're quite savvy about where you are. And it also has to do with stylistic preferences because all of these differences are going to make very different styles. Of Cabernet Sauvignon. With the Boyd Cantonac here, we've got quite a minerally almost style. It's almost like sucking mm -hmm. on pebbles, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, um, and those those grainy tannins, yeah. you can almost like feel them like sandpaper or sand grains in there. Whereas you move on to the Dow, wow, I mean that's like a uh, I'm almost a powerhouse, isn't it? Yes. It's rich and it's voluptuous, mm -hmm. and yet it has beautifully 
almost velvety tannins. Yes, it? <laughs> it's, to me, I always describe it as chocolate melting in your mouth mm -hmm. because cho you know when it melts, it has that just really fine, fine, gritty sort of half dry yeah. you know texture. But none of those, um, even though it's on the bigger, fuller bodied style, it doesn't have any of that jammy character. Still no. a lot of nuances in there. Some red fruit, a little bit of herbal character giving mm -hmm. lift to the wine, accentuating all of that black fruit. And then uh, again, the lark mead from Napa Valley in Calistoga, um, somewhere in between. Uh, you know, what, what you've got is quite a medium to full bodied style of wine, um, quite rich and seductive. A real, very fine grained t tannins, not quite as, as sort of grained or, or, or sandpapery as the, the Boyd Cantonac, um, but not velvety like the Dow. Um, and maybe more in the blue fruit spectrum mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, that, that sort of blueberry pie and maybe a little bit of plums. Oh, boysenberry and the, sort of a... Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's mm -hmm. gorgeous. Yeah, it has quite a, quite a um, strong frame, really, yeah. which is lovely. This Just, is what I love. When you, when you find, you know, that great site for Cabernet Sauvignon, why would you grow anything else? Gorgeous. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Thank you.